we have covered two thematic sacrifices bishop h7 and knight f7 and today it's going to be a different square and a different piece which is knight e6 in, in this episode we are going to learn something new that is the sacrifice on e6 and it's usually going to be a knight sacrifice on e6 today we are going to learn something different from what we learned yesterday as i already mentioned in the previous episode there are different ways to give sacrifices usually it's done more often with the minor pieces and the weak squares in the black position usually are either the h7 or the h6 g7 or the g6 pawn on f7 and pawn on e6 so these are the squares usually where most of the sacrifices happen especially when either the black king is in the center or he has castled on the king side Okay, in the previous episode we have seen about sacrifices on h7. Now we are going to see sacrifices on e6, both with the king in the center and also in positions where he has already castled. Okay, so now let's start with a simple example. In this position, black has already castled and there is nothing left on the square on e6 for white to capture. The square e6 neither black nor white have anything but even in this case using the pin the pawn on d5 rook d1 bishop d7 and queen d8 it's not a good idea to have our queen on the same file as the opponent's rook so to exploit both these factors white came up with this beautiful sacrifice knight e6 okay in knight e6 if he captures with f e6 then d e6 we have this classical pin that's being exploited along the d file so he didn't do that he took bishop e6 and then after d e6 the queen is under attack so he has to either move the queen away or interfere so he interfered with knight d6 and then after e takes f7 check white got a very dominating position the black's king side structure is completely collapsed and the white pieces they all Come to life okay so here the sacrifice we saw on e6 there was nothing there okay now let's see some position where there is some pawn on e6 and then we sacrifice a knight in that square let's go to the position in front of pragya this is a difficult one but the position is set for an interesting sacrifice on e6 pragya can you tell me why the sacrifice on e6 should work without going into the variations what gives you the idea that this sacrifice could work because after they take f1 to e6 the g6 pawn becomes weak the g6 pawn basically the king cover is being broken apart right the pawns e6 f7 g6 they are forming the cover for the king and with this knight sacrifice we are blowing it open okay so can you make the moves on the board and show me how does it work knight into e6 mm -hmm. f into e6 so we gave a piece for one pawn well, after that queen into g6 now we got two pawns queen now g7. he has two options he can either play queen g7 or he can move the king let's see what happens if queen g7 interference happens if queen g7 bishop mm -hmm. into e6 check we got the third pawn queen i check mm -hmm. queen to g7 check yes King into g7, mm -hmm. bishop into d7. Now we get the piece back. Fantastic. Now, not just we got the piece back, but we also have like how many pawns? Three, three pawns, pawns extra. We want three pawns because the e6, f7, and the g6 pawns, we got them all with the sacrifice. Isn't it? Very good. Now, Rosh, again, we see an example which is kind of similar to the first one we saw because there is nothing on e6 okay but still the sacrifice can work can you show me how knight e6 yes f cross e6 mm -hmm. bishop cross e6 yes now he has two options he can move the king or put the rook on f7 let's see what happens if he moves the king queen into queen into f8. f8 it's a checkmate so let's see what happens if he interposes with the rook Rook f7. Rook then, f7 then rook f7. Yeah, we simply don't get the material immediately because he is under an absolute pin. The rook cannot move away at all. So we bring one more rook into the attack. 
and then we are going to win the rook right he yes. has a rook for knight it's easier to win when you have a material advantage got it so there are few things that we have we can uh, observe in all these attacks both in the previous episode where we gave sacrifice on h7 and also in these examples where we gave sacrifice on the square e6 the common factors are the king is being neglected okay there's not enough cover for the king and the pieces are like kind of scattered on the other side in many of the positions the knight is on a5 knight is on b6 okay the pieces are on the queen side ignoring the king so one important lesson we have to learn is never ignore your king the king is the most important piece in the game and it's not enough to have just pawns in front of the king one minor piece in front is always helpful okay so before you move the last piece away from the king you need to keep this in mind okay so only when there are less pieces on the board you should do that with more pieces on the board keep at least one piece in front of your king okay so let's quickly see one more example with sacrifice on e6 square is involved now in this position the sacrifice is not so obvious but it is working uh, because of the factor of pin okay so now the white queen on e8 the black queen on h5 which is hanging doesn't have a support we have a pawn on f7 and we used it to play knight e6 check now if f e6 we simply take queen h5 in the queen and the game with it so he cannot do that now he has to run with the king now if he comes king g6 then we will have knight of 4 coming back with a check so he cannot do that he will lose the queen so he has to play king f6 and now we come back knight of 4 so in this sacrifice what happened in the earlier sacrifices black could take back the material black could take the knight on e6 but in this instance he will lose immediately the queen so he is refusing the sacrifice so this we need to keep in mind not all the sacrifices have to be accepted okay in both the cases it could work both the ways if you give a sacrifice it doesn't mean he has to accept it the same way if your opponent gives a sacrifice it doesn't mean you always have to accept it so we have to improve our calculation abilities and whenever a sacrifice is involved we try to work out the consequence if i take the sacrifice what could happen will it end in a good position for me will it give me an advantage or it will put me in an unfavorable situation if you feel accepting the sacrifice is not good for you probably we just simply have to reject it like in this instance okay so he refused the sacrifice with king f6 we play knight f4 now knight f4 is a fork it attacks the bishop and the queen the queen has to move defending the bishop okay so he goes queen h6 and after queen h6 we have queen e5 check okay and queen e5 check supported by the pawn on d4 the only square left for the king is king g5 and then we give knight h3 check we are seeing the forcing moves in play check 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 okay and after queen takes h3 queen g7 check okay the king is coming out very fast and after king h5 we can play queen h7 check king g4 and we have queen f5 check and after queen f5 check it's almost over king g3 queen f4 mate okay so you see the most common words are used in this variation they are check capture check capture right and most of it is check so we again and again we have to reinforce that forcing moves are very important and this you need to learn when you are very young so with this uh, we have seen uh, how the sacrifice on e6 plays under different circumstances let's quickly go through what we have learned about the knight e6 sacrifice For the viewers we are going to give in every episode many puzzles related to the topic which we are covering in each episode i would strongly advise you to go through the video slowly listen to the explanations understand the concept very well and once you understand the concept very well 
start solving the puzzles and my advice since these puzzles are not very difficult in the initial stages i would advise you not to move pieces on the board try to visualize the position in your mind and get the answers okay if it is too tough for you after few minutes of thought maybe 2 or 3 minutes maximum you can refer to the answers and if your answers are not correct don't get disheartened that's how we all learn the game so keep solving lot of puzzles and we will ensure in each episode you get enough exercises to work at home in the next episode we are going to look at a sacrifice on a different square that's going to be on h6 and it's usually going to be a bishop h6 sacrifice